In a previous video, I talked about myself and my ability to speak seven languages. And every time I share this fact with other people, because we're talking about languages and I say, yeah, I speak seven languages, they go like, what? Are you serious? How do you do this? And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Maybe it has to do with the fact that I grew up bilingual, but I somehow knew that there has to be more to it because I'm not different than you or any other person watching this video. I don't have a language gene that just helps me like memorize all the languages in one month. And I knew that there has to be a secret. For this video, I sat down, I did a lot of research, I looked into other polyglots, I talked to other polyglots, and I came to the conclusion that there is a system. And in this video, I'm going to share this system and also this secret with you. To explain it better and to make it easier, I will break it down into three methods. So let's dive in. Method one, learning 50 to 100 basic vocabularies and up to 30 sentences. I talked about this before. I am married to a Brazilian and this means that every time we go to Brazil, I am kind of like forced to speak in Brazilian Portuguese. And this time we went to Brazil in September and this time was a bit more challenging for me because my husband had to work remotely and I was kind of like left alone with his family and also relatives a lot of times. And even at some points I went to the grocery store alone or I had to go to the pharmacy and he couldn't go with me. So I was just on my own. And this made me kind of like forced to engage with the language. And I knew that I'm going to be on my own at some points because I knew that he has to work remotely. So before the trip, I sat down and I wrote down 50 to 100 most basic vocabularies and I wrote down 50 sentences. And believe me guys, these sentences helped me a lot because I already had some kind of knowledge and I had some kind of go-to phrases that I could use. And also during my trip, I jotted down like all the sentences that I was really using on a daily basis because the ones that I wrote beforehand were just kind of like an estimation of what I might use, but this was the real deal. And then I wrote them, do wrote them down. And when I came home, I sat down again took both lists into my hand and compared them. So the one list that I made before the trip and the one that I made during the trip. And I really used a lot of these phrases that I prepared beforehand. So it really helped me. And here are some of them. I'm not going to mention all of them, but here are some of them. Hello, good morning, good evening. How are you? What's your name? My name is Sorry, I don't speak Portuguese very well. Can you repeat that? Can you speak a bit slower? Thank you. How much is this? I don't know. I understand. I don't understand. I am hungry. I am thirsty. I would like to eat. I would like to drink. Can I have the check, please? I'm tired. Where can I find the bathroom? Can you help me with this? I think. I don't think. I think we should. I agree with you. I was there. I did that. Learning these phrases not only helped me to be able to communicate with native speakers, but it also helped me to improve my level, like my language level in Portuguese. So at the beginning of the trip, I was uh, on an elementary level, let's say A2, because I understood a lot of things. But after the trip, I progressed and I came to an intermediate level, B1. Because learning these sentences and also these vocabularies not only made me feel more confident, I was also ready to take more risks. Because I realized 
and I was able to speak to native speakers and they responded and they understood me and they were like wow your Portuguese is so great and I was like wow let's do it and I tried to risk more and more but just like trying out to build new phrases and um, to kind of like also make mistakes I was not afraid of making mistakes and I even asked his family to correct me and every time they would correct me I would say the correction out loud or in my head and I, will, I would also like go home and I had this little notebook and I would write down new words that I learned, new sentences or the correction that they made in my pronunciation or in the word order and or like in the grammar or whatever. And on top of that, I was even able to talk in the past tense, which I was not able to do before the trip. Because uh, after like two weeks, I realized that I also want to talk about my past or that I want to talk about what I did yesterday because uh, the conversation would not just revolve around the present tense. So I was kind of like also forced to look into the past tense and to listen to them and to see like, okay, if it's he, she, it, then they say it like this. If it's I, then, say, then they say it like this. So I was really like immersed in the language and I had to kind of like find a way to just speak. And I'm sure that you're now sitting in front of your computer and thinking, yeah, Sandra, you can talk like about this. Um, we're not that lucky. We don't have native speakers around us, but that's not an excuse. We live in an age of technology, technology that gives you access to kind of like everything you want. You can find everything. Um, you're here on YouTube, you're watching me, you're watching my story, you're listening to me and you have TikTok, you have Instagram, you have Twitter, you have all of these social media apps that give you access to English or other languages um, and I also see a lot of people uh, DMing me or writing into my comments, hey, I'm looking for someone who wants to speak in English with me. So why not replying to this comment and kind of like find new friends? And nowadays you will also find many apps like HelloTalk, My Language Exchange, The Mixer or Meetup, where you can connect with native speakers and also arrange meetings with them online where you just talk in English or German, Spanish or what, whatever language you want to learn. On top of that, I also offer conversation courses on my website. It's one hour full of speaking in English. You choose the topic and we just talk for one hour straight. Try it. Method number two, reading books or watching movies or series in the language that you would like to learn. When studying alone and buying a textbook and just studying with the textbook, it might become pretty boring after some time because it's not the same as like in a language school where you are in a group and you have like group exercises and you kind of like discuss the exercises from the book. So yeah, as I said, it soon becomes boring. So what I would suggest to do is to look into books or series and movies. My personal story, I was in love with Harry Potter and I read all of the books in German, which is my native language. And then when I started learning English, I was like 10 years old. I had English in um, elementary and middle school already, but of course it was never the level of kind of like just taking a whole book and reading it. But I said, I will give it a go. And I bought the first Harry Potter book in English and started reading. In the beginning, it was super frustrating because I almost didn't understand anything. After 10 pages, I was already tired uh, because I had to go back and forth and like take my dictionary. We didn't have a smartphone, so we still had a dictionary. And I had to kind of like look for the words and I got tired. But then I said to myself, okay, you know, the story, you know what's happening. So instead of like just trying to understand every single word, just try to focus on the context. And uh, this decision was the right decision. And uh, this made me kind of like persist and I finished book one. And I was already better. Like by the end of the book, I was like, oh wow, I understand it, I learned new words. I don't know the exact dictionary definition of the word, but I kind of like know the context. This led to me buying the second book, 
and the third book and so on and I read all of them in English. I did the same with movies because after I read the books I was like okay now reading is another story because you can take your time, you can go back, you can like pause and everything but watching series or movies is another thing because they're like just going. There is no break, I mean you can stop but uh, they will not speak slower. But still, I decided to do it. And at this time, I was around 14 and I loved How I Met Your Mother. So it was a huge trend and everyone was watching it and I watched it in German. And uh, then I decided to buy the DVDs, which I did, of season one and watched it in English. Again, it was super frustrating I was just there like oh my god I will never finish this I had to like stop and like focus again and but I was like okay you made it through Harry Potter with reading which is also not easy you will make it you will <laughs> make it through How I Met Your Mother season one watching in English and I really did and again in the beginning in the beginning was super frustrating and by the end it was just super cool because I learned new idioms, I learned new words, I, I heard the pronunciation, I was like, ah, you pronounced that wrong, so you need to pronounce it like this. So that was super cool. And on top of that, when I finished uh, like all the seasons of How I Met Your Mother, I challenged myself to a new series, which was Grey's Anatomy. I watched it in German, everything was clear, but then, of course, in Grey's Anatomy, you have another level of English. It's more medical terms and other problems. So this was another challenge. And again, super frustrating in, frustrating in the beginning. But then by the end, it was just amazing how much I learned. And I never looked back. I don't watch series or movies in German at all. I just cannot do it anymore because the dubbed version is just not the same as the original one so yeah just do it try it and be persistent and don't give up because you can get through it method number three create a system and a habit into your learning we are all busy people i as a teacher i fully understand that and a lot of students come to me and say, oh, I couldn't do the homework. I couldn't look at the vocabulary. I couldn't do this or that because I had to do this and this and this. I totally understand this. I'm also super busy, but it's super important to create a system. Are you commuting to work by train or bus? If yes, why not trying to use this time to revise some vocabulary? So, um, when I started learning Brazilian Portuguese, I looked into the app Duolingo and uh, it's super simple. They just uh, teach you lots of vocabularies and build up onto this and also look into grammar after some point. So you just kind of like play. You have like a picture and then four different words and you have to find the correct one in case you're driving to work by car or you're super busy doing house chores why not taking your earbuds put them into your ears or take the radio and find a podcast in english or any other language that you really enjoy listening to are you bored and scrolling through your phone on youtube instagram tiktok wherever and just basically doing nothing why not subscribing to youtubers or why not follow english teachers that will give you some meaningful content where you can learn new vocabularies, idioms, grammatical structures, or synonyms, whatever. Join one of the platforms, Hello Talk, The Mixer, Meetup, My Language Exchange, and make it a habit of joining them like twice a week for 30 minutes. Try to find someone with whom you can talk for 30 minutes twice a week. If you create a system, you will not have to stress about learning a language and making some extra time for it in your daily life. You are just kind of like creating a system where you integrate language learning into your daily life. So you don't have to think about it anymore and it just becomes part of your day and it also becomes fun. I, for example, labeled all of my spices in four languages and every time I cook, I look at it 
and I see like all the spice names in four languages and it's not just great for me but also for my husband because he's learning German at the moment and it usually takes about two weeks of consistency to turn a new habit into a standard habit so just two weeks don't forget that language learning is all about patience you will not reach a native speaker level in two months but you will see progress and your own success is the best motivation believe me when i arrived in brazil and was just like able to speak in those phrases that i prepared and then looked at it after three weeks and saw this huge progress that i made i was so motivated i came home and i started watching series in portuguese just because i was so motivated or when I finally understood season one of How I Met Your Mother without stopping every two minutes, I was so freaking motivated that I said, okay, I'm buying another season. When I was done with all the seasons, I bought Grey's Anatomy because I wanted to be like even better. So your own success is the best motivation. Don't forget that. Polyglots aren't geniuses. I'm not different than you or any other person watching this video. I don't have any language gene that makes it easier for me to learn a language. But what I've learned to do like during the course of my life is to turn language learning from a boring school subject into something fun and to integrate it into my daily life. And the good news, it's available to anyone who wants to take language learning into their own hands. And now it's your turn to find your language learning style. So do you prefer method one, where you learn vocabularies and sentences and where you find speaking partners? Or is it more a method two, where you read books and watch movies and series? Or is it even method three, where you integrate language learning into your daily life by making it a habit? Or are you going to take little chunks of every method and make your own method? Let's see. And if you find your language style or if you already know it, then leave a comment. I would be really interested in reading about your experience. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like this video, share it, and see you soon for more.